I've been doing SysML now for over 10 years, including seven years as a Rational Rhapsody expert for Telelogic and IBM, and three and a half years for Artisan, where I was the product manager in Juice Studio's first implementation, the SysML 1.0 spec. One thing I hear a lot from people new to MBSE is where to start. It's a valid question because SysML and tools like Rhapsody can be used in many different ways. They provide the mechanisms to express systems models, but not the method. In this video, I'm going to show you some extended tool support I've developed for a very simple SysML method that goes back to UML basics. My mission is to make executable MBSE simple for automotive. To make such a large step, the trick is to start small. So my process considers it as a journey of model transformations using a library of methods. Like cogs and machine, they can be connected together to create an end-to-end -end process. To do this, I've created a series of Rhapsody plugins that accelerate and remove manual steps associated with each method. In principle, it follows Peter Hoffman's Harmony SE method, but I've relaxed some of the aspects to make it easier for people to pick up a book on UML and SysML and relate it. This is the first of three methods, a transformation from use cases to functional requirements with the use of activity models. It aims to squeeze the best out of two worlds, doors for requirements management and wraps to use in the SysML graphical notation. First off, I'm going to create the model with my helper profile. The initial goal of the SysML helper was to speed up my training so that I could immediately get participants productively modeling. Failure to set up a Rhapsody model with the optimal display settings can waste a lot of time. The plugin does the heavy lifting of setting up the package structure profiles and properties. It also sets up an initial gateway configuration. The automation provides a number of benefits. The first is speed. I want the team to focus on creative and fun bits, not repetitive tasks. The second is reduced tool knowledge required to be productive. An expert in MBSE can model without any tool support. To scale, we need a method that works for people who are not experts. The third is consistency. The models start to look awfully similar when you do this, and this helps people to navigate, move between, and review each other's work. Of course, use case diagrams look simple. It's just gingerbread men and ellipses. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean getting them right is easy. I've got some tips here, but the real tip is this. Do the diagram as a workshop, not on your own. As Napoleon said, a good sketch is better than a long speech. And I'd say that the journey of getting people's input is arguably the valuable bit. We can also start to see some of the benefits of modeling SysML, such as the ability to complement model elements with requirements. This coverage can be analyzed for completeness and is invaluable for maintaining consistency as ideas inevitably change. When doing SysML modeling with requirements, I often want to know what requirements an element is traced to, so I've tailored Rhapsody's extended tooltip here to show the text of the requirement just by hovering over it. Once we're happy with our buy-in with a high-level diagram, then the next step in this particular method is to create an activity diagram to describe the steps for each use case. My plugin overrides Rhapsody's standard double-click to speed things up. In the interest of consistency, the activity diagram has been set up to model a use case. There's a precondition, postcondition and trigger, plus a comment with tips. These are all copied from a template diagram residing in the profile, so if I want to change them, then I can do so without a software change. Most use cases start with a trigger. In this example, the first interaction the system has with the actor is that the homeowner baits the trap. I'm going to use an action to say that the system reacts to the baiting of the system by attracting mice with the bait smell. I'm then going to say that the normal operation the use case after baiting would be for the homeowner to set the trap. Control flows in SysML can be used to sequence actions. We want to ensure, for example, that the smell is being emitted after setting it, so I'll reorder the sequence graphically and reconnect the control flows to make this order obvious. Advanced SysML users may have noticed that my plugin has simplified the activity diagram toolbar. By reducing the options, my aim is to make things simple for this task. This customization only applies to the requirements analysis package and is conveyed using properties I've set in a specialized profile. 
Moving on, let's look at things that a diagram is potentially better for than text. Using a fork node in SysML, for example, I could show that the two actions occur in parallel. After setting the trap, the trap is armed and ready to spring, while attracting mice at the same time. What makes an activity diagram really good for use cases is its flowchart nature means that it's intuitive to most people to understand without too much training. It's also easy to see the big picture. Another notion I found people really like when they use this method is this interruptible region. Using this, we can show that when a system receives an event, it stops doing the things it was doing. This enables us to visualize a range of new scenarios that might occur. What are the conditions of the mouse entering might the trap spring? Or what if the homeowner wants to bait the trap and the trap is already set? And what happens if the mouse enters? Rapsi doesn't have an interruptible edge in the toolbar, so here's a little tip. First, turn the line shape to straight and add a couple of user points. I actually like the way this notation conveys meaning, so it's something I use a lot. We can achieve the jagged edge by offsetting the user points that were added. In Hoffman's Harmony SE method, there is a strong focus that a use case should include six or more scenarios. The great thing about the activity diagram is that we can visualize these as a big picture. Decision nodes with GAR conditions can be used to show the different alternate paths that might occur if the GAR condition is true. We can build up the use case progressively, therefore, starting with the sunny day scenario and then add in alternate flows. If one of the sub-branches in the activity turns out to be needed by a different use case, then I can pull it on as a separate activity and invoke it using a call behavior action by dragging it onto the canvas. In just a few minutes, we begin to understand graphically how the system might work. The plan at this stage is to use this diagram to read back to the stakeholders each of the use cases. I can do this in many ways, even if they don't have RAPSD. Printing from the right-click menu is an obvious low-tech way. If you're much more advanced, then perhaps you're already publishing models to IBM's Jazz platform so that people can access them through a web client. For me, the piece de la resistance here comes back to Jacobson's Ford in a book on advanced use cases that I got in the year 2000, written by Armour and Miller. Use cases, Ivor wrote, are the requirements capture vehicle and provide a tool for requirements traceability. They can also provide a base for defining functional requirements. The final step of this method, therefore, is to generate functional requirements from the use case steps and, if it's important to you, to synchronize these into a module in Rational Doors. What I'm going to do now is to use the action text to generate a set of requirements for the feature and to trace the requirements that I create to the elements from which they derive in the model. At the very least, I expect every step of the use case to trace to at least one requirement, but it's perfectly possible for multiple requirements to be derived from a single step or from more than one step to trace to the same requirement. The helper has a menu that automatically creates a requirement and the relationship in a single go. And if you feel brave, then you can generate a bunch of requirements and then work through each to improve the text. At the end of the requirements creation, we need to check for completeness. So a menu command is provided. This will report a fail if there are steps or transitions with guards that have no underlying traceability in the model. We can click to navigate to the failure and either create a new requirement to trace or establish a dependency relationship to an existing requirement. Finally, I've got to move the requirements to a folder where the gateway configuration is expecting requirements to reside. The helper here plays a trick, which is to stereotype them to make the gateway think that they were imported from the associated document. Having done this, I can launch the gateway select a requirements module that corresponds to this model and push the requirements into that module. The gateway synchronize dialog provides us with a bi-directional option that can be used for this. At this point, the requirement IDs in the model would be perfectly synchronized with doors and I could switch the mastership of the requirements to doors if I wished or keep them in the model and use the bi-directional option again to synchronize them. I don't actually have doors installed, but I'll launch the gateway synchronize dialog anyway to show you this. You need to deselect the add option and click to update high level requirements from RAPSD. 
Check in the Reload High Level Documents After Modifications option will update the requirements in the model with the unique IDs and doors. Before doing so, however, you need to select the module you want to add the requirements to and make sure that it's ready to receive them. For example, you might want to delete any dummy requirements that are in it already, otherwise the gateway will import them into the model. This more or less ends the demo of this method. In summary, what we've seen is a 10 minute method for model based systems engineering using IBM Rational Rhapsody with a plugin that I wrote called the SysML Helper Profile. This shows a model transformation from use cases to functional requirements using an activity model to capture the use case steps. Method automation like this provides a number of benefits, including lowering the knowledge needed to be productive, speeding up the work and ensuring consistency. The goal is to have a method that can be used by non-experts in the tool that experts in the tool also want to use because it means they can focus on their engineering problems, not how to configure the tool for someone else. This particular method helper is available as a GPL license if anybody wants to use it. If you want to learn how to use it, or you want to see some of the other methods, then let me know.